to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary to call the roll. Okay, Mr. Ely. Here. Mr. Prescott. Here. Uh, call the meeting. Purpose of the special meetings advertised to discuss the formation of the preliminary, preliminary budget and final budget and consider and take action on other business which may come before the board. Public comment on motions on the agenda. Okay. Motion to advertise water and sewage plant operator once engineers can complete the description of the scope of work. So moved. Second. Mr. Ely? Yes. Uh, yes. Mr. Prescott? Yes. Motion to allocate money towards the purchase of a new police park from Act 13 funds charging the police department's uh, 2016 budget. Total cost of the new car to be purchased through the state bid is approximately $37,185. I'll move that we all allocate those funds. Second. John, do you have anything additional to add in this? We need to put a, we need to put a dollar amount in there. Do you want to give me a dollar amount? Maybe something different. Well, we, we, we can take half of it out of this year's budget. Uh, half of it. it doesn't really make it all coming out of the same spot. He wanted to take it out of this year, but half of it. Correct. My, my suggestion would be if, if you ended up a little better than you first anticipated, to weigh heavy on this half, to make this the heavy half. Do you have a recommendation? As far as the dollar amount? Yes. Now, what, what's half? Half would be 30. We'll say it's uh, roughly 19,000. A if you can, If you can go, if the budget will handle 2022, I think that would be wise. That way, we have the other half. Well, it's coming out of the F-13, so yes. Okay. And what, what kind of number do you want to put in there? 22. 22. I'm okay with that. Any second? Yeah, we second it. Okay, yeah. Okay, Mr. Ely? Yes. How about yes? Mr. Prescott? Yes. Uh, motion to pay bills to sign checks. Hey Dave. So um, moved. Question on that. If, if you guys are sitting good the Act 13 for this year and you don't yet know what you're going to get next year, end of the year, wouldn't you better just pay for the whole thing this year? Since it doesn't, make, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. Money's still sitting there. It's just a matter of budgetary tool. He has, he has available, he has open space in this year's budget. It doesn't come about the same pot. Just to know what the advantage is, you know, splitting up over two years. Budgetary, just make, make his budget within balance. Did you have a first you second? second that, you second it, you make a motion. Yeah. Second. Mr. Ely? Yes. I'm going to yes. Prescott? Yes.
When you guys get this well, this bill from uh, North Bain Township uh, for the uh, building inspection, this is for an entire year worth of charges. I did a 75, I think it was 140. That's, I think, what, what we were looking at. Because I know, I, I couldn't yeah. remember if it was 70 or 80 wide. I think it was 70, I believe. But I had him price it without doing the washout blocks on the front of the walls. Right. Because it's a lot cheaper. Because I know I talked to um, Randy at Tampa Blaine Township, and he was able to get the blocks for like $40 a piece up on the other side of Pittsburgh. So I know that it would be cheaper than having log cabin go get them and bring them out if they were going to do that job. And I know, uh, but I have the I have two different sizes. Did you fire one was a 70 by 120, and the other one was a 60 by 140. Because like I said, I didn't know how big. Did they, they ever get involved in the prevailing wages issue? Well, one thing that he told me, and I don't know exactly what this means. Let me find it in here. He put it at the bottom. Note, this is an NJPA pricing, which allows for no bid contracting. And it has something to do with, they can only, whenever you do anything for municipalities, it's a flat rate. You can't, they can't upcharge. You know, I don't know what that, I just know that it, it, across the board, if it doesn't matter if it works anywhere in the state, 
It's the same. It can't, it's all the same price. Now, I don't know if that means prevailing wages or not, but I yeah. know that. Well, that's something we'll probably have to find out how that fits into that. I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah and, send it to the office. We're glad to look at it. I'm glad to look at it. Okay. And then the next thing, I got a paper, and I talked to you about that paper, mm -hmm. but, but the one was for the campground. And one's your Republic Leader Renewal. Right. And it says that's to be in by January 10th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, and, and just my paper says that. The resolution doesn't say that. Yeah, it, the resolution says January 31st. Yeah, the, the I believe, I believe it's, it's 31st. Was the okay, but it says January 10th. Yeah. And I remember, Dave, when we talked about that. I haven't that. seen it. I believe it's the last day of January. My, right. My understanding. And, and with the confusion from last year, and I understand what that means. I mean, after we hatched that out, I'm glad we got to the bottom of it. But it also says in there annually. And I haven't been able to come up with a good definition of annually, other than is it is it because it's January 31st and it's on that date, or is sure, it sure. because that means for anybody say somebody gets one in October? Is it, is it based on their yeah? I don't know. So they're not prorated. No. Okay. Same way with your junkyard licenses, or they're all based on the calendar year. So if you get it late in the year, you know you just yeah, you get it is with this. You're out. Okay. And uh, yeah. the next thing, I haven't been able to make the last couple meetings. For, for one reason, I remember I told you guys we had the right. Christmas on the last yeah. one. But uh, I had watched the video, and at one point you had in there where your health, you're having bad health issues on account of the Dawn of the Freedom Group. I didn't ever said that. So. I thought I heard that in there. Well, I'm not going to discuss my health with you right now. If you want to talk okay. about my health, if you got my number, can you call me for it? Okay. And then last meeting, did you you left. That's correct. Now, I did some checking into that. I don't. I don't think. How do you How do you close a meeting? Meeting's over at that point. There's no forum. But can't how, you don't? Have, there's no closing <coughs> vote. No. Meeting's over. And. And it don't have, it does, you didn't, re, did you resign? No. But I see you're back in here today. Well, obviously. But I didn't, I don't know how you can leave a meeting. No, I, can you it, explain it, that, I, how you, what I've seen all it happen that? many times over the years in many places. Including Donald Township. Because I know, I was just reading this paper for today, and that's it. And, and you, you, you had a paper. You challenged the freedom of speech well, millions of times. And on here you wrote public comment for chair discretion. Public comments. Public comment. Public comment. Read the Sunshine Law. It's you have the right point. you have the right to speak on any item before it's voted on. That's what the law says. Now, can, I, can I reread it to I, you? I, I know what it says. I read it a million times. Yes, you have to allow reasonable public comment of any item of concern. So that that is before the board for a vote. No. That's the interpretation mm -hmm. no. of it. If you'd like, we can go ahead. I'm not going to. I'm not. You know what? I have a place to be. I have a father-in-law who's celebrating an 80th birthday. I'm not supposed to be there. Let's move it along. Well then, because I'm going to have to leave again. <laughs> okay. I had this just in case you I needed know. that. Because I thought you were really just planning to to resign. Oh, I appreciate your your time. Thank you. That's pretty clever. I didn't think it was clever. I just thought you were... I'm not going to discuss it any further, okay? Okay. You want to call me, you got my number. Okay. You call me, I talk to you on the phone, and I, I call yeah. you back when you leave a message. And I just had one more thing. Yeah. I wanted to know if, if, Zach, are you done looking at that water ordinance? You've had it for a couple weeks. Uh, I think I'm finished with it and brought it back, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Anybody else? Any public comment? Go ahead, J.D. Go ahead. Can you ever? I'll go last. <laughs> the event that occurred on December 22nd, when Doug Teagarden left a legal Bonneville Township Supervisors meeting during public comments, is called a vote voting quorum. When enough voting officials exit a meeting to prevent the rest of the officials to conduct business, that is called a voting quorum. 
The first voting quorum occurred in the PA General Assembly in 1787. All the officials were present for the assembly, but left before the vote. Days passed with no business being conducted until some of the citizens of Philadelphia took it upon themselves to track down the missing members and drag them to the assembly and force them to remain there to create a quorum. Business resumed. Abraham Lincoln jumped out a church window to break a quorum in 1840. Doug Teagarden is not Abraham Lincoln. Voting quorums became regular in the 19th century. So Donegal Township is again making history in 2016 by Doug resurrecting voting, voting quorums. He has repeatedly said he is responsible for the health, welfare, and safety of Donegal Township. Doug owes the residents, at the very least, to listen to them. Instead, he attempted to adjourn the meeting before public comments were finished. And when he didn't get his way, he left, so there would be no longer be a quorum and no more public comments. Based on events, the only reason to stop the meeting was because he did not like what was being said by the residents. He could have used the agenda to complain and criticize us, but instead, he usurped the time allotted to the public. Doug is not a member of the public. He sits on the Board of Supervisors. Free speech is protected by the United States Constitution and the Pennsylvania Constitution. Most importantly, is protected my right to criticize my government. Leaving an open public meeting to stop public comments is unconscionable, and in my opinion, very un-American. Thank you. Very good, sir. Jay? I just want to say something on the same subject without <coughs> making a major issue out of it. Dave, at that point, I thank you for staying. Uh, that, that, uh, Zach, you weren't here, so, you know, when you take no oath and obligation to fill a position, you have a duty and obligation to do so. I don't know what your reasoning was, but very disappointing. Um, you left Dave in an awkward position. Um, you don't know the technicalities or the legalities of it, but I don't know how you can leave a meeting hanging, and that's what, uh, you know, we had a discussion after you left, uh, because there was concern that without properly closing the meeting, we left it unopened, we left it open or unsettled, and could at a later time continue it without public notice or whatever. That would be unlawful. So, so, what's that? That would be unlawful. What would you do? Meeting without giving public notice. Well. Technically, you never no, closed the meeting unlawful. and adjourned it. It's unlawful. Well, that, that wouldn't be the first time that happened, but uh, <coughs> talked to Dave, and I asked Dave to give us his word that there would be no further business conducted or nothing else, no actions taken until this meeting tonight to you know, put everybody's mind at rest or whatever. But if you're, you're right, Donning Township isn't worth it. There's nothing worth it. You don't have your health, you don't have to squat. But if this is too much for you to stand, um, Kathy's right from what she said. You guys have the agenda. You have your opportunity to speak. You, you also had the agenda, but you spoke about stuff that wasn't on the agenda and took up public comment time. And then as soon as somebody else worked, I, I wanted to speak that night. I didn't get the opportunity to because you shut it down and then you left. That's, that's not OK. And, and I don't, I don't. Would you like a response? Sure. Uh, the, uh, and I'm going to give Kathy some credit here, I'm going to write this down, because I, I, I believe uh, that she truthfully, she believed that what she was saying was correct. And uh, it was contrary to what, what I was told that happened. And, and in fact, uh, corroborated it with the solicitor the next day that that indeed our attorney made an offer to uh, Mr. Furman verbally when they were standing in line waiting to return for the judge. Which attorney? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mr. No, Mr. Which judge? No, which attorney? Which attorney? Mr. Crooney made the offer to Mr. Furman, and Mr. Furman says, no, I'm okay with it, but I can't tell you that I'll get back to you, okay? That was, it was never, it was left up in the air whether or not it was supposed to be in writing or not in writing, and, and um, our attorney, uh, Mr. Crooney, in fact, uh, wrote Mr. 
Furman an email asking him if he was ready to discuss it. He indicated he was busy on something else at the moment of time. And I never, neither side ever followed up with it. So I, I truly believe when Kathy said that she didn't have knowledge of it, I believe that that's what she believed. And, and, and I only know what I know from what the attorney told me, and I don't know that to be fact. Uh, it, to me, it's hearsay when they tell you that's what they heard. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't hear what they conversed between each other. So I think it was a mistake <coughs> happened. I don't know whether our attorney did it. I don't know whether their, your attorney did it. I don't know whether together they did it. Okay, I know that it was it was a verbal some verbal communication took place between the two. It was never documented in writing. Okay, therefore became a mistake of facts. I don't know what happened. I wasn't right there when they were talking, and I don't believe any of you were right beside them when they were standing in line. Yeah, we actually I was yeah, I didn't we heard them. Over. He told and, Mr. Cooney um, to send the language over. Well, he didn't understand it that way. Is what he told me. Okay, and, I, and again, I don't get what they told me. I don't. I'm not defending that. I mean, maybe he's lying to me. I don't know that. Okay, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. We've asked to get to the bottom of it. In fact, I wrote a letter to Mr. Kearney telling him that I was very disappointed that it was not followed up, and and explained to us what happened. And in fact, when 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 Mr. Kearney called me, and 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 at the court hearing, the original court hearing with from Emory, and told me what was offered in, in line. Um, that I relayed that at the time to, to, to the other supervisors so they would know what the status was. And Dave, what did I, did I, what did I tell you? That's exactly what you told me. So I, I was acting on, in good faith. In fact, if it I don't true, believe you ever act in good faith. See, that comment's not called for. You want to be nasty? That's your nature. That's okay. Well, just, just hold on. Hold on. <coughs> We're not going to engage anybody tonight. If we are, I, I've got someplace to be, Dave. Let's, let's, okay. Well, then we're not done with public comments. Well, I, I'm going to leave, and you still have a forum. I don't care what's called voting or not. I've got an 80-year-old father-in-law that I need to be with. I'm not the one that has meetings every Thursday night. You do. Our Dave, point is we have no control over the wording of the advertisement. That was all on the township. The township was well aware of when the meeting was. We expected every day let's to not, receive. Let's not debate that right now. Well, you know what? You don't get to tell me what to do as an American citizen. There. You're your not the teacher. You're not, you're not in charge there. of the class. Kathy, Kathy, you can't tell me not Kathy, to be out of you order. Don't, you don't have the floor right now. I. Why you, does he get the floor? Dave. You. JD has the floor. Then right JD. Now. Okay. What? What was probably the most disappointing is your continued abuse of power. Dave is the chairman. You run the meetings. Okay. You don't get you you don't get to make the rules up as you go. You guys want to implement rules, but you don't follow them yourself. You broke your own rules that time. Dave did stay. He gave us the benefit of the doubt. We thanked him for that. What was the most disappointing? It was what three nights before Christmas, two nights before Christmas. Okay. You went on and, and said about this time of year and that. And, and you no, forward and along. Okay. But you know what, Doug? Nobody had any public comment. Did you nobody, let me you want my you. phone number? You can call me. No, just let me finish this. I've, I've got some place I'm going to leave. Okay, I can finish this real quick. Okay, I believe I have a floor. So, nobody, if you recall, at the beginning of the meeting or after, when you asked for public comment, everybody was content. Christmas so much here. Let's get along. Let's have peace. You know, <coughs> nobody brought up anything. Nobody said anything. You interjected and felt it couldn't just let it go status quo and all leave peaceably, go home, well, go shopping, whatever. What did, what did I say, Jimmy? You, then you, I said you brought, I said you brought up about what happened at court that day. I didn't day bring it up. You did. Mr. I brought it up. Day, he, he brought it up. You said I believe we have a order of what happened in court today and read it. No, no, Dave, Dave brought it up. I brought it up and I and I, I asked, Doug, said, asked Doug if he had a chance to look at it. And I, I, that's what I had, and that's essentially what we had offered, and my understanding of what we had offered at the at the hearing. But what I'm saying, it wasn't necessary. You could just let go. We could everything. And that's not a dispute. That the but fact that it's dispute. We can do, we can argue about that, but that's not the a, fact that you brought it up. And obviously, if the <coughs> attorneys aren't being forthcoming, that was not knowledge to us. So if they had a conversation that we didn't hear, but the difference is you weren't there. Swat wasn't there. We were all there. 
and that offer was not on the table. If that offer was on the table, if then somebody should have conveyed it and relayed it and saved us both a bunch of time and money. I, I agree with okay? you. Okay, and I would like to see that email and or any evidence that that offer. It's been right to been requested, so you'll get to see it. Well, yeah. It's from it's from Crooney to, to Tammy that he would follow up with Mr. Furman on the wording. And did he ever? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's between hey, your attorney and secretary, not yeah, the attorney. Said, the told us he, he sent him an email and Furman replied back that he was busy with something else at the time. And, and as far as I know, it never went any further than that. <coughs> well, attorneys always win. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they win win. Kathy, all your. Oh my. Anybody else any public comment? Good. A few weeks ago, it was discussed uh, that we don't have an updated code book in the Planning Commission meeting. Is there any reason, I know it's expensive, you guys talked about 10, 15 grand. Can we not use the Act 13 money to it's, go ahead and get one of these? We, we've looked into that. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, I was not in the meeting. I didn't have a chance to, I did bring that up to them, they said they looked into it. Do anything else? No, that was it. I didn't know what got brought up. Sorry. Tim? Um, my, uh, my question or comment to what he just said was, instead of updating the code book in the manner that we have, can we look at the E, it's E code 360. We've looked, we, we're looking, we looked at it before, it was prohibitive, but we can look at it again. Only because, yeah. uh, you know, I, I know that in dealing with, or when I've talked to them before, they also help make sure that everything follows That's all the That's through right general guidelines. code, correct? Yes. Yeah, they, I think the other company around it offers it. Yeah, and yeah. they and they are nationwide, but they make they're sure big. that all the codes are legit, you know, all across, you know, well, we're currently out. using general code. That's who we use. Right, but this you know. but this is it's called E code three six. I'm aware of it, so it's yeah. very good. But it, it would then put it all online for everybody to see. Yeah, I'm all in favor of that. Okay. I just so you have Tammy? Yeah, that's it. Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. How about yes? Oh, I'm alright. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.